Actually, you know what I want to check out also? Let's check out Brendan Shaw's channel, first of all, because I think he's, I think I saw something on the subreddit earlier about him uploading a clip of him ranting on the fucking Reddit trolls on his own channel, which is absolutely hilarious. Let's see if he did that. Did he actually do that? Is that his own channel? What, what, what channel was it? I saw a flipping clip of it just recently. Uh, oh, yeah, it's his own channel. Okay, let's see. Let's see his own channel. Let's see his own channel. Let's see his own channel. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, there. Yeah, see, it's there. Shit. So this is this is obviously it's funny when you type it in it right you type in Brendan Schaub on YouTube and the first two things that come up is that TFAT K channel, Golden Hour, and then his own channel and then all this other stuff. The bizarre mixture of Brendan Schaub, most hated comedian. Like Jesus Christ, this is crazy. Um, so let's go on this one. This is he took a clip from that podcast that he went on and clipped it and put it on there. Somebody had to take a screen grab of the fire and the kid Reddit like everything. So in a weird way, he's actually promoting the Reddit. The place that he thinks is evil and is causing him so much pain and is full of pedophiles and kiddie diddlers and women abusers and shit. That's what he's painting out to be because he used his family. I, I know some commentators had a good point. Some people made a good point to me about the whole kids thing because I don't agree the kids should be personal and subreddit. I think that's bad. I think that's bad form and I don't like it. And if I could, if I was in charge, I would say no pictures and no stuff about the wife and nothing about the kids. I don't think that's fair. They don't. They didn't choose to be, you know, you know, in his life, whatever it may be, and they're innocent parties to some extent. And I also think this guy provides much, you know, he provides enough content as it is for everybody. You don't need to start mining his family. That's not necessary. Even even Jay, leave uh, leave big Jay Shaw alone. Also, I would say that. But he also is a very public facing person, and he also does parade his family on social media. Like, like he's a celebrity like he legitimately like he's, his wife thinks she's a celebrity she's got a verified account i think they've got hundred thousands followers and they put their their kids on social media without blurring their face anything on there which is a little bit disturbing in my opinion so they you can't really blame people for using pictures that you already upload on your own stories and sharing them on a subreddit it's kind of like a fan forum it kind of is what it is but i understand why people get a bit crazy with it and i think if i had a kid i'd be definitely acting different about it but i think he used these kids in that excuse as a human shield to kind of insulate him from any kind of blame in my opinion people you know what i mean that's what basically happened there but hey let's watch it um regardless is how brendan shop handles the internet hey let's see what he has to say it's funny as well the views aren't that much you know for his own channel this is his own channel and he's getting basically the, the same amount of views that i would get when i clip up some stuff from my own podcast that gets around three you know four three k five k sometimes depending on who it is so that's pretty bad for his own channel and whatnot he's getting that let that you know level of flipping engagement is pretty horrible personally but let's see what, what let's see how he clipped it to make himself look good i don't pay attention to it i think you, it's a it's a bad thing whether you pay attention to the negativity or the positivity yeah i think you just got to keep doing your thing you know my heroes grown up didn't live this world, you know, so it, it can't be healthy. I think we'll find over years how it affects the brain, how it affects creatives and businessmen with who do pay, pay attention to that stuff and read the comments and stuff like that. But you're not creative and you're not a businessman. Those are the two things that you need to understand. And also running back to it, he's just parroting what Brian Callum was saying. Brian callum has been saying for a while, oh, um, the praise, I don't read comments. I don't even read co positive ones because you're never as good as they say you are. You're never as bad as they say you are yeah right you don't read them because you got accused of rape brother most of the fucking comments on there are going to be taking the piss out of you being wrinkly and also potentially allegedly being a rapist so it's probably better for your mental health to probably not read the comments but it's not like you're not reading them because you're not going to see good stuff you don't want it to get to your head because you want to be pure and about the craft brother we've all seen your stand-up comedy it's the same shit physical comedy a man's like this i'm very strong i fuck girls like this Women are here. This embrace. I'm a warrior. I'm really a small little old man, but I feel like a warrior inside. We know what your comedy is like. So you're not pervert preserving your mental capacity or mental health for anything outlandish and crazy. Your comedy is basic, brother. Basic. That's so I don't want to be that sample size. I'm not going to be you're not trying to get that digital CTE of no, reading comments yeah, every day. I have, yeah, I already have enough CTE, man. I'm about to drive my porsche off the pch but uh nice humble brag right instead of saying i'm about to drive my car i'm about to drive my prius 
I'm about to cycle off of the fucking nearest interstate. I'm about to cycle, you know, on the nearest interstate and hope for the best. No, I'm about to drive my Porsche, my shiny Porsche, my fast Porsche, my low profile Porsche, my expensive Porsche <laughs> into the interstate. You know what I mean, I love this guy, man. Even when he's trying to defend himself and come across somewhat measured and reasonable and cool, he has to, in into, you know, sprinkle a little salt bait, humble, humble brag in there. Gotta love it. Um, I think <laughs> uh, with the Reddit group, yeah, you, it, it, it's interesting because, you know, the watch everything you do and... Also, isn't that how you say interesting? Let's rewind that again. How do you say interesting? The H, but um, I think <laughs> uh, with the Reddit group, yeah, you, it, it, it's interesting because huh? I think <laughs> uh, with the Reddit group, yeah, you, it, it, it's interesting because interesting, cool. Because you know, the watch everything you do, and th there's there's some things that I'm on board with, and then the only there's a small select group on there who are just evil. So how? Demonstrate how they're evil, please. How? As as Joe would say, how? How? How they're evil. Please tell us how they're evil. All that Reddit does is make fun of the things this man says. All that Reddit does is make fun of the things this man posts. I've said it from the beginning. I was a former fan. I was balls deep. See the term I use? Balls deep. And if you're a real fan, you know how much they overuse that phrase. I was balls deep in the fire and the kid. I was part of the T5K army. There's a period in my life, if I go back to a couple of Reddit accounts before, because I've had a few over the years, hashtag internet boy, but yeah, I've had a few, right? If I go back to my original one, I'm pretty sure I can find posts of myself on that subreddit defending Brendan and Brian when I first found out about PF Changs. Going on, I was saying things like, these guys aren't that bad. You guys are over-exaggerating. You guys are being haters. I'd wrap it the same thing they said. Then over time of just watching their own content, they turned me off. Not the flipping subreddit. Just them talking and being the way they are eventually turned me into a homeless cat. I was like, you know what? These guys are horrendous. This guy is a mongoloid. That other guy is a cuck. I can't do this anymore. And I tapped out. I tapped out because of what they said. And again, all the stuff that you see on the Reddit is stuff that they post. Now, like I said before, if I was in charge, if I was a CEO, along with BC and flipping Eric Hawani, I would say as a rule, no more posts of the wife, no more posts of the kids. But again, it's the internet. You can't control it. And if you post publicly images of your wife and your children on your social media and you're a verified account and you try and go on like you guys are like the comedy Kardashians or some shit, right? With this kind of like family life, posting everything online, being super open with everything. You can't then be angry when people start saying mad stuff about your family because you're putting them out there in the open. That's why you should probably keep them private if you don't want them to be subjected to stuff people say online. But also going back to the evil stuff, what is evil? Laughing at your non non funny special is that evil? Taking the piss out of the stuff that you say incorrectly is that evil? Taking the piss of stuff that taking the piss out of the fact that you can't be self deprecating and laugh at yourself under your super thin skin, taking the piss out of the fact that you try and act like you're a good guy but you're actually a bully, taking the piss out of the fact that you know you may or may not have had some extramarital affairs out here, one that may be involved Bobby fucking Lee who at one point was your friend, that doesn't get spoken about about near enough actually. You tried to fuck your friend's wife or girlfriend at the time. Basically wife, because they were together for a long time. And it just got swept under the, under the carpet like nothing happened. The truck with Annie, he said, she said. But for the most part, you admitted to the flipping, you know, Kalila shit. That should be enough for people to say they don't like the guy. But for him, for his, in his view, that's evil. That means you're being evil. That's not being evil. That's just calling out the bullshit, I would say. But hey, what do I know? So there's a difference between hate, which I get. I give you a lot to hate on. I do a lot of content. I make a lot of jokes. I offend a lot of people. I get that. You don't make a lot of... People aren't offended by your content or the amount of shitty podcasts that you have or how terrible your stand-up is. People, for the most part, are offended by the things that you say, not even the jokes. That's the thing that doesn't really make any sense with this guy. He thinks he's legitimately some sort of, like... um right-wing provocateur or something right you're not 
he's not even smart enough to have the right wing grift and to kind of lean into that side, even though he tries to. He doesn't really have the mental um, or the, you know, maybe the acumen. I don't know, whatever. He just doesn't have it to kind of be that guy. But he wants to be that guy. No one's offended by his jokes. If anything, it'd actually be way more refreshing if he actually was funny. It'd make it a little bit harder to kind of take the piss out of. But he's aggressively unfunny, says really crazy shit, does horrible stuff, interrupts people, bullies people, acts bigger than what, acts better than what he is, um, thinks he's above people and better than people in some regards, lies all the time. That's why people don't like the guy. But hey, I read it both ways. You don't get to a certain level without getting a lot of haters. You just don't. If you look at Logan Paul, Drake, oh LeBron James, name some God. the massive oh celebrities that we have in this world. There, and you go online, oh you read their comments, my, or to my buddy Joe Rogan. God. He's comparing himself to LeBron James, Logan Paul, Drake, and Joe Rogan. Don't get me wrong. Taking it at face value, saying that the biggest people in the world, celebrities-wise or personality-wise, do get their fair share of hate is obviously somewhat true. Okay, Captain Obvious, thank you. Have a star. Have a little sticker on me. There you go. Enjoy yourself. Here's a lollipop. Knock yourself silly. But in the grand scheme of things, just because those guys get hate doesn't mean it completely negates why you get hate. And the Brendan Shaw hate, I think, is quite specific. If you go on that flipping subreddit, and for the most part, and you actually look at what people are talking about, it's loads of like character defects, character personality flaws and faults and narcissistic traits and shit that people have issues with. Like fundamental things about him as a person they don't like. Not the fact that he's successful and he's... No, no one gives a shit about that. No one. They all just say, hey, you lie a lot. Hey, you may be a cheater. Hey, you bully people. Hey, you interrupt people a lot. Hey, you can't take criticism. Hey, you, you think you, you're smarter than what you are, but you're not. Hey, you pronounce things weird. And when people call you out on it, you look like you want to Chris Ben Wadham. Like, that's what people talk about. That doesn't mean the hate that you get isn't justified. It may go over the top sometimes. Cool. But come on. Nobody, you know, I don't know anybody gets more hate than that guy. But he gets more love. You know, I'm in the business of likability. So if you watch my... You're in the business of likability and you're the most unlikable person in the world. Riddle me that. I beg to differ. Podcast, you buy a ticket to my stand-up, you buy the merch, you buy the whiskey. You're a fan. I make a living off likability. So I don't... No, actually, weirdly enough, you kind of make a living off of unlikability nowadays. Oddly enough, which is why people keep telling you to lean into it. Because you probably have a capacity to make way more money than you are now if if because it, it probably just makes way more by having loads more podcasts right you have loads of podcasts you have loads of sponsors and it kind of just you kind of double dipping and shit so that makes sense congratulations to him good business acumen top marks but he would actually make way more money at doing less shows if he actually leaned into the meme a little bit oddly enough but but also double double sided sword because if he did lean into the meme i think the the onus to take the piss and to tease would be would would go away because now it's kind of like a forbidden thing. Like what Louis, C. Louis, Louis J. Gomez, not Louis C. Cameron, Louis, G., Louis um, J. Gomez said, like the Brendan Shaw button is like the button you're not meant to press, so it makes it tempted to press it. So now, because it's kind of like a thing that you're not meant to do, people do it a lot. If he kind of leaned into it and kind of acknowledged it, maybe it'll kind of go away and it wouldn't be as lucrative. Who knows? But either way, it's legitimately hilarious. The business of likability when you're unlikable is hilarious. No, I don't give the hate energy. As far as the Reddit goes, I get it. And some of them are really funny, and I appreciate those guys, whether it's good or bad towards me. It gets a little dicey when they, they want to... I just... I don't understand when they, cro when they cross the line when it gets into my personal life. Right. It's like, I'm not Tom Cruise, dude. Why the right. fuck you give us... <laughs> who cares about that stuff, you know? And they the personal life stuff, again, is kind of odd. I'm, I'm a bit conflicted in that regard, too, because he's kind of right. It's really no one's business, really really no one's business if he is out there cheating on his wife it's no one's business really and truly right i don't think so um but i think the reason why people kind of pull it up and speak about it is because he tries to go on like he's a beast of a dad beast of a husband all the flipping time and people clearly have evidence of the fact that it may be incorrect this view of himself that he may have may be kind of you know based in some fairy tales 
So people want to call it out because he clearly lies about loads of other stuff. So if you can call out an obvious lie, why not call it out? And some people just actually have a principled, moral aversion to it. And they just want to call it out. Like, it's just like something they just don't like. Like, okay, I heard this person is cheating. I'm going to expose them. And then he just is unfortunate recipient of it. And unfortunately for him, he has so many dodgy things out there that haven't been answered just yet. Like even just a recent one with BGO exposing stuff. Like the BGO exposed a lot of stuff and, you know, he hasn't disproved any of it. If any, if anything, he made it look, it looked like it was true because he bought his mother-in-law a house, which I'm sure didn't have anything to do with the fact that, you know, BGO exposed him for the Addies and Baddies shit. I'm sure that isn't true. I'm sure he didn't buy his mother-in-law a house to make up to his wife that he cheated on her and stuff. I'm not sure that happened because I'm sure to buy a house, it takes way longer to organize, to get the papers done than finding out on flipping Instagram that people have outed you. I'm sure that isn't the case, but it did look a little bit convenient. It looked really convenient that the same time that BGL went on MMA holes and exposed all the baddies, texts and DMs and instances of when he's doing this, whatnot, and shared the screenshots on flipping the subreddit, it seemed a little bit um, coincidental, you know, co coincidental and stuff that suddenly now he's buying his mama house and it's now happy family and shit and everything's back to normal. It seemed a bit strange. And then on top of that, the piece de resistance, the piece de resistance has to be this clip that we need to play here, right? Um... Let me see if I can get it up on there. Let's see. The one where he hands that girl a note. That clip may be one of the most epic clips in the world because that was also the, the clip that made him decide to try and get the Find the Kid Reddit taken down because he thought the people on there were trying to, you know, get kids or something. Let me see where I can find it. Uh, let's see. Let's do, let's do cheating. Let's see what comes up when you just do Brennan Shaw cheating. Um, it's a video of him on live stream. Where is it? Someone got it? Hand someone a note? Uh... No, it's not there. Let's see. Note. Let's see where it is. He has, yeah, there we go. That's the one. We watched it before. So here it is. It's from the Cambodian, the Cambo, Cambodian River Pig. Absolutely amazing name for a channel. Let's see his video. This is legitimately, I think, really real bad luck. In his, in, in to be fair to him, this is supreme bad Brendan Shaw luck personally for me when I look at this, because who who else could this happen to but him? Who else could this happen to? You're on a live stream for a flipping Super Bowl event or Super Bowl, as he would say. And during the intermission, the camera that's taking the picture or live stream camera that's, you know, doing a nice shot of the outside of this flipping mansion seems to pick you up, handing a note to some flipping baddie somewhere in the corner here. Like he has the worst luck in the world. I swear to God. Let me just put this up on here. But it's somewhere around here, I think. Let's play the video. There he is, see him? There's a person who isn't the wife, right? Get a note in the hand. He walks off, looks back, and there she is. She gets up and does like the period little sign to her friends. She walks over to her friends. And does something. Hugging. Yo, big up fresh water baddie. 499 super chat. Appreciate it. I love these streams so much. I'm inside listening while it's 70 degrees and sunny in Northwest Ohio. Thank you, Oz. Yes. Folded hands. Yes, yes. Big up you. Thank you for tuning in. Appreciate the super chat, my friend. Yeah, that's that's the vibes, man. That's the vibes. Create the best background content in the world. That is my mission statement. You know how flipping oh, Apple are like creating the best flipping products in the world. My mission, create the best background listening experience ever. <laughs> this is it. So big up, big up Freshwater Baddie for the super chat. I appreciate you, man. But yeah, this video was absolutely hilarious, man. Where is it? Where is it again? There's a lady, I think, somewhere around here. Anyway, to stop this video, he legit has to be thankful anyway um, that this, whoever this flipping person is, didn't come didn't flipping go on to flipping changs and decide to do an ama or something he legitimately is lucky that didn't happen because if that was the case that would be so awful but i also am in the belief you know i'm not really one to talk about the wife on here because i think you should keep them private but just in the subject of this my belief in general is that they may not have an agreement in terms of like what he gets up to on the road but i just have a belief deep down in me that she doesn't give a shit 
like generally doesn't give a shit because the lifestyle is advantageous or is somewhat beneficial so she's kind of you know what's that word called uh rationalize it in her mind of like okay cool i don't really care because i get to basically live this lifestyle that i'm probably not going to be able to live on my own um and i got two kids anyway you know that kind of brain of like you know where am i going to get this where am i going to expect this kind of level of treatment if i was to leave all this sort of stuff goes in mind and i think that's basically what plays into it and who, and also who wants to be a regardless of that even if you're a materialistic forget that who wants to be by choice a single mother with two kids under the age of flipping 12 or something that's pretty hard to do and work out for anybody even the best circumstances and um it makes sense why she'd be like you know what i'm gonna put up with it because you know why not because in the grand scheme of things who else knows about this stuff outside of a small group of people who are obsessed with brendan not really many people so you kind of avoid embarrassment because no one really knows all this stuff outside of just the people that kind of don't like shawb and stuff so i can kind under, of i can understand into a small degree why she decided to be like you know what i don't care it is what it is so but yeah brendan's lucky that girl never came out if that girl came out and said something oof, he'd be finished he'd be cooked thank god my wife She's been with me since I was in the UFC. So when you're fighting UFC, you get a lot of love. You get a lot of hate. There's no in between if you're doing it right. So <laughs> she's conditioned to that. She doesn't. In his mind, he has this obs he has this flipping belief that somehow everyone that's doing good in life just has loads of haters. It's such a bizarre mentality or idea to have, no? I think. Like you believe that everybody that's doing well just has to have a group of people who follow them around the internet everywhere they go following their every move and calling out every dumb thing that they say i don't think that's true i think there are some people that exist on the internet that people that people just leave alone and let them get get up to, you know get along with all their good stuff that they do i don't think all of them are you know kind of hounded around the interwebs by a horde of people who legitimately think they're redacted that's not the case it's a weird cope like everybody that's successful has got haters so that means if they're successful and they got haters and I've got haters, that means I'm successful. It's like, no, you do not matter in the grand scheme of things. And pay attention to it. She doesn't care, you know, at this point. So thank God for that. But the only time I don't like is when they make it super personal. It's about the kids. It's about, you know, certain things. But, you know, nobody's harder uh, on 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 me than myself you know there's nothing they can say that i don't tell myself Lies. usually on a daily basis so trust me it's way worse whatever they're putting out so Lies. although i you know i get it i appreciate it and you know i just don't give it energy i think one of the things that i have going for me is you know i post and ghost i don't pay attention to that stuff but then i'm Lies. also you know i'm on the road whatever it is 30 weekends a year I, you know if i the post and ghost stuff is super lie. You know that's a lie because we know he reads all the comments. That's a proper lie. I get done with this interview. I go get coffee. I can't go down the street without somebody telling, hey, Brandon, love you, man. So to <laughs> He gets recognized more than fucking Michael Jackson. Everywhere he goes, everyone loves him. Funny that, isn't it? That's real. That's what I care about. Social media, it's a factor for sure. Also, what's up? With the, what's up? Hey, big up Richie for the $10. Appreciate it, brother. As congratulations on the milestones. What's up, has crew? Bring the red hoodie back with the Balenciaga ballet flats outfit back, mate. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. Because I'm you the $10. I'll bring it back. I'll bring it back for sure. Everyone, everyone wants a, everyone wants the Balenciaga ballet flats nowadays. I'll try and bring those back. I'll try and get those first of all, and then I'll put those up on stream for sure. Hundred percent, one million percent. Let's continue. But it's not the end all be all. I think when people realize that, that one in, if you're walking down the street, one in 10 people are on social media, especially on Twitter, that you can't give your self value, your self worth of what social media is. You're going to live a much happier life. So that Reddit group, they're going to do their thing, you know, and that comes with the territory and I was built for it. That's why God gave me big shoulders. Oh, lame dad joke. Lame, lame dad joke. That's why I was given big shoulders to handle all of that. Get out of here, man. He's acting like he's... What's that sculpture where they where, where the person's carrying a globe? What's that called? Uh, sculpture. Sculpt... Is it? Sculpt... Sculpture person carrying globe. What's that thing from again? I've got the vision in my head. What's that thing come from? Yeah, he's acting like... Yeah, he's acting like he's Atlas. That's it. Brendan thinks he's fucking Atlas. 
<laughs> That's what he thinks of it. Comedy fucking Atlas. This is B Shaw. This is Brendan. This is him. He fucking thinks he's Atlas, isn't it? That's him, mate. That's the ego. That's the fucking ego on the guy. He fucking thinks he's the com the comedy Atlas. Right? He's out here like holding control. <laughs> exactly. Batless. Exactly like really? Like fucking hell, mate. Give your give your head a fucking wobble, please. But um <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I uh, they're I, gonna I, clip they're, that. They're gonna love that one. <laughs> Yeah, they're gonna love that one. <laughs> they're gonna love that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I was built for it. And then also, you look, you know, if you look at me, I know, you know, I probably look like the guy that bored you in high school. And, and, you know, they'll use some of that, you know, like, oh, Brendan's a bully or whatever. And I know. No, no, you are, mate. You are a bully. We see what you did to Bobby Lee. That's bullying. No, define bullying, I know, but that's bullying. Actually, you got gotta play that. You gotta play that. You gotta play that. Gotta play that. Define bullying, please. <laughs> Is that the first one that comes up? Define bullying. Oh, look, boom, boom, boom. Okay, cool. The the you just have a clip of it. Oh no, the one's just got a clip of it. Should we put it there? Oh, that's gonna be a good clip. I just want to say just 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 a clip of it. Someone must have a clip of it. Define bullying. Brendan Tracy. There we go. There we go. Someone's got it. Of course, someone's got it. The best clip ever they've ever seen in your entire life. Yeah. Real, real, hey, will you clear uh, bullying meaning um, define bullying for me? <laughs> These reactions are legitimately some of the best reactions you see. Kalilas and Bobby Lee's. That was epic. And it was, a, you know, what was about it? That was comedic excellence. It was Brendan struggling to remember the line because it was clearly a line that him and BGL, a line of questioning or pushback that Brendan and BGL had discussed before him going on this show. They discussed it because I think they saw all the memes and the constant mentions of it on the subreddit. So him and him and flipping BGL were talking about it. And one of the pushbacks was like, get them to define bullying. Because actually, you're not bullying them, dude. Actually, you know, you know, dude. Well, that's all sort of nonsense. And that's what he wanted to remember. So he was stuttering over remembering those, you know, that fucking easy to say sentence. He finally gets it out. And it's the delayed reaction, one after the other. Kalila looking first, then Bobby Lee looking first. That's what makes it a piece de resistance. Let's, let's play it one more time. Real, real, take, will you clear, uh, bullying meaning, um, define bullying for me. Kalila, then Bobby Lee. Like what, like Callan, bu <laughs> like Callan bullied you? <laughs> One of the best clips ever, I swear to God. Anyway, continue. No, I look like the guy, but if they actually knew me, you know, these people know me. They've never met me. You know, they're not buying tickets to a show. So I don't give it energy because if I did, I wouldn't have a business. I wouldn't have this house that I'm talking to you guys in. Right Humble brag again. He did the Porsche. Now he did the house brag because cause I got a Porsche because I've got a house. This makes the, un the unequivocal, crazy hordes amount of flipping people calling me out seem, you know, irrelevant. They're all homeless. They're homeless. That's what they are. Let's homeless. Let's actually see if we can find that clip. That that's one of the good ones. <laughs> homeless. Let's see if we can find it. Someone clip that. Yeah, there we go. That's the one. The infamous homeless. Someone's got it. <laughs> I love it. There's two of them. It's four months ago. The infamous. Okay, cool. It's the Pierre Chang's rant. Oh, let's. Which one should we check out? Let's check out this one. This is longer. This is. This is. This is. If you're wondering why. Um, Brendan Shaw detractors or haters call themselves homeless cats. This is the origin story of where that come from. Absolutely epic rant. And literally, yeah. if you're listening to this and you're just you're you know whatever you work at Starbucks, whatever, which I love, but it doesn't help the fighters when you tell because they advice. know already. Yeah, yeah. They, he's saying like, they trust me. They know what they yeah. did wrong, but they also don't need advice from a guy who's never been in there. Mm. Like it. And it's actually probably the, one of the worst things you can do. I when I lost to, and I was young in my career, so especially at that time, you're ultra sensitive. When I lost to Roy Jones, I'm sorry, Roy Jones. Never <laughs> fought Roy. Yeah. Um, when I lost to Roy Nelson, yeah. I was at PF Chang's with my family afterwards, <laughs> and the true. waiter was giving me tips on a jab. I, I, I and I went, oh, cool, man. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to be cool. I'm way younger at the time, so your ego is crazy and you're aggro. And I'm trying to be cool. I'm with my family. I still have a black eye and a little bit of a busted lip. Back of my head hurts. 
And uh, I ordered my orange chicken, which I love from there. And the hot and sour soup is the best in the world. I still love P.F. Chang's. If I cheat me on P.F. Chang's all day. This is when he actually used to actually work out. And he actually, you could believe that he had cheat meals. Now every day is a cheat meal. So I'm sitting there with all my family. And he goes, yeah. The acid reflux as well is crazy, isn't it? You know, I saw the fight, man. I, I got to say something. So with your jab, and he starts doing this stuff. And I go, I'm like, oh, cool. I appreciate it, man. He keeps going. And I go, oh, cool, man. Uh, you, you, uh, what are you doing here? You, you, you trying to get to UFC or do you, do you have a box fight coming up? He goes, no, no. I took a few classes at LA Boxing, which is formerly known as the UFC gym. Uh, took some, or is known now as the UFC gym, but at the time they're LA Boxing, which I used to work at. That's a whole nother story. But he goes. Um, so he used to work at this gym. It's associated with the UFC, so the guy clearly knows something, but because he's working at PF Chang's, he does not matter. And I'm sure this happens to other fighters. I'm sure most fighters might bump into some overzealous fan that basically wants to critique them or give them advice on something. And most fighters are probably gracious and just keep it moving. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for your suggestions. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you, man. Thanks for support. And I've got to go back to my family and just keep it moving. You won't mention it. But he's mentioning it because guess what? He thinks he's better than them. He thinks he's better than that guy because he's the fighter and that guy's working at P.F. Chang's. That's the really unfortunate part of this story because this story would be funny if he told it in a funny way, but the way that he's talking about it, he's talking about like, how dare this guy speak to me? I'm the UFC fighter. I just come from a loss. Don't speak to me. You don't know what you're talking about. Relax, check in, leave me alone. Really, really bad. Really, really bad. I took a few classes at LA Boxing, man, and the, the guy was training me there, and I just thought I could help you with your jab. I'm like, very cool, man. Thank you. Could you please get my orange chicken? Just get my goddamn orange chicken, bro. It's, it's really from a weird. good spot. Yeah, but it's just- oh, no. The, the, that's, not, that's not the homeless one. The homeless one is the other one. That's the homeless one. Homeless cat. It's the homeless cat one. That's the wrong one. That's, that's a P.F. Chang's one, but it's a homeless cat one. But for the people that are, are negative or are on, uh, are, are on forums and are uh, create troll accounts, I, I view those people the same I'd view a homeless guy critiquing my <laughs> art or critique. <laughs> he hates people that critique his shit so much and his stuff is so easy to critique. It's so terrible. Imagine being that bad and you actually can't take criticism at all. <laughs> oh, I love him. He's amazing. He's the gift that keeps on giving. Big up, B-Shaw. Critiquing my set or critiquing a podcast they do not matter. matter. It literally does Doesn't not matter, matter to me. I mean, not, because like because someone the the the, per, the person Chin tried to help him out in the background. Not 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 homeless, but he just carried on. Who would go out of their way to create that account or to live in their mom's okay. basement or whatever job they're working, working could not even fathom fathom the amount of work it takes, takes to pull off something, whether it's a set, set or a good podcast. Oh yeah, true. To pull off a set is so hard. To pull off a co- podcast is so difficult. Sh- truly, only 1,000 of them. Thank them. Or a business or merchandise or, you know, it's just, it, it, it does not matter. matter. It does not matter it to me. It does not matter. So when people let lets that affect their mood or their life, it's mind boggling It's crazy to me. What do you care? It'd be the same as if a cat created a profile. That's a good example. Who cares? <laughs> a cat. <laughs> exactly. He's like, no, even a homeless even a homeless guy. If a homeless guy was just creating a p- profile and talking shit, they have, it doesn't matter. Oh, I absolutely love it, mate. That's one of my favorites. One of my favorites. Anyway, go back to this. Right now, so, um, you know, I think it, it, it get, the lines get blurred where it's like, oh, he's a big, strong guy. He's fighting UFC. He can handle this. We, there's no limits. Everything's on, off limits. He, he, there's nothing off limits. We can go as hard as we want him. It's like, it actually hurts my feelings, man. It's actually not cool, you know, but I jokes, I'm all for. I'm all. No, you're not, though. You're not for jokes. You're not for critique. You're not for nothing. All you're for is buy my merch, buy my tickets. Um, that's it. Watch my podcast. There is nothing to come back from at that point. Really strange way to put you. But look at the next part. He's saying now it hurts his feelings. It's not nice. And then you'll see the mask will slip. If you say it to my face, I'll kill you. Watch what he says here. <laughs> all for, man. I'm a professional comic. We roast each other, we do our thing. So if it's funny, it's witty, fire away. But when you start going towards the, once, once you start going towards the personal side, well, then you've crossed the boundary, mm-hmm. you know? And now, also, if you want to have this conversation in person, you want to offend me, we can do that. I can do that. See? 
So one in one moment, it's not nice, and I feel I feel attacked, and you're bullying me. And on the other side, it's like I will kill you if you say it to my face. What are you, the aggressor or the victim? Pick one, my friend. You cannot be both, not at the same time. We can just see how it goes for you. That's never happened. As long as I've been in entertainment, I've never run into anybody that said something to my face. So I just, I get what they're doing. If it's funny, it's witty, and they're going to do their thing, I actually appreciate it. But when you cross the boundary and you, you disrespect me a different way, you know, that, that's where I have an issue with it. When I say issue with it, it means that it hurts my feelings. I'm not going to do nothing to you. You just said you were going to kill them if they saw you, in, saw you in front of you. Now you're not going to do nothing. Make your mind up as well. This guy has like, um, this guy has like real time fucking CTE, right? Like, you know, in the moment fucking amnesia. He just said a minute ago, it was all, is that what? I'm not going to be, I'm not the bully you expect me to be. And then also I think that, that subreddit has crossed the point. Not all of them. Some of them are actually just funny and they're fans. And also, can somebody tell me what's up with the tongue? Why does his tongue look so heavy in his mouth? Is that like a, con is he swollen or what? What's happening? That here? subreddit has crossed the point. Not all of them. Some of them are actually just, not all. It's like, it looks like it's inflamed. Just funny and they're fans. And Do you, you, have you ever like been punched in the face and you bite your lip? Or you just bite your lip or you bite your tongue by accident? And it's all like swells up and it kind of makes you feel, he's kind of talking like that. He kind of, he kind of talks the way I'd think like a, you know, those two hours I have the little tongue sticking out. Kind of looks a little like that while he's talking. Or am I, or am I bugging out? Dude, I'm not going to be, I'm not the bully you expect me to be. And then also I think that, that subreddit has crossed the point. Not all of them. Some of them are actually just funny and they're fans and they just show it in a different way. And I understand that at my age, but you know, a lot. Oh, nicotine. Okay. So nicotine pouch mouth. You're saying yeah. freshwater baddie, please break my body and face, please. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there's some people out there would have that kink. Please break me in half. A lot of them have crossed that boundary where, you know, they hide behind this keyboard and they want to do evil things, which I just, I don't understand. That's to me, it's like, and for what, for what? Because I do stand up. You don't have to buy a ticket because I do free podcasts that triggers you. Right. We, you don't have to watch. You know, so I just... Nope. It's because some people don't like that you may be a cheater. Some people don't like that you may be a bully. Some people don't like that you lie. Some people don't like that you may be interrupting people. Some people don't like that you're thin-skinned. Some people don't like that you may be, you know, treat your fans poorly or that you are um, somewhat hard to get along with in general. There are plenty of reasons, plenty of reasons, even just the stories. Just that story alone of him throwing his college roommate through a glass window because they didn't want to share his food with him. That's probably enough to get people to be like, you know what, I'm cool on you. That's probably enough. Aside from everything else, aside from being best friends with an alleged rapist, aside from being best friends with an alleged diddler, like all those things are, re are, I think, you know, worthwhile reasons why somebody will just not like the guy. But again, in his mind, it's all to do with free podcasts and all this sort of nonsense. That's, that's, that's legitimately insane, but also in it, narcissist behavior. Everyone's I'm just cut from a different cloth. I, I'm just a positive person. <laughs> no, you're not. You're the extreme hater. Now, anyone that says that I'm just super positive, it's always super negative, by the way. Word of reason to everybody out there. You most, I think most people out there know, but anybody that you hear saying, oh, I'm just super positive, actually. I'm always nice. It's like, if you have to say that, you're not that person, usually. Oh, there's some podcasters that will lean into it. And if there's beef between comics, they'll, they'll lean into that. And they like that that controversy and that drama all the time, like it's Real Housewives of LA. And I would probably be much more famous and much further along my career if I entertained that. I just can't do it. That's a lie though. He says he doesn't like it, but inadvertently without trying, he's the one that has the most drama. Who else, can you guys name any other stand-up in the LA scene who has this many videos about them on flipping YouTube or people dissecting everything that they do? He's a legit content generator. The amount of stuff, shitty stuff he says, crappy stuff he does. Like, I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? I legitimately think, like, he's the only person I can think of that gets in that kind of drama. I can't think of anybody else in LA who legitimately gets in constant back and forths or just drama just in general. Like, even just now, that comment he made recently about, you know, rescue dogs being for poor people. It's like, do you need to say that? Was it funny? No. Do you need to say that? No. There you go. Another bit of easy drama. Like, he always gets himself involved in stuff.
inadvertently probably because he's too redacted to do it on purpose but still anyway what can you do what can you do big up that guy again again i think in purpose bigging him up let's see hopefully it works out for him hopefully it works out 